NVIDIA's price target is $1,100. According to a Wall Street analyst, does this price hold water? I've done a DCF valuation to find out. Let's discuss that valuation model in this video. I will tell you my conservative, base, and bull price targets for NVIDIA stock in the next 12 months. Will it be $30 or $1,100? Let's find out. Please note, I will not just be throwing out a random number. This is a full DCF valuation model. Xiaomao, I'm recording. How did you sneak in? Xiaomao says to like and subscribe. If you want to skip to the end, go right ahead. You won't hurt my feelings. Remember, this is not financial advice, just a thoughtful analysis. Let's get started. First, let's start with a quick overview of NVIDIA. Founded in 1993 by Jensen Huang, NVIDIA has become a global leader in the semiconductor industry. They are literally the highest market cap company in semis. They are huge. They're primarily known for their powerful GPUs, graphics processing units, but have also ventured into various other fields. GPUs, you know, gaming. Now who doesn't like to play games? Come on, raise your hand. Tell you what, if you've never played Mario, I'll go skydiving. It's a bet. Oh. Okay. Where was I? All oh, right, the NVIDIA valuation model. Getting back on topic. NVIDIA's innovative technologies are using gaming, data centers, autonomous vehicles, and artificial intelligence. That's the big one. Artificial intelligence. We'll go over that in a second. Um, that pretty much drives everything. NVIDIA is a tech powerhouse with a strong track record of innovation and growth. Now, let's discuss some market trends that make NVIDIA an intriguing investment. One of the key trends is the increasing demand for GPU-driven technologies. From gaming and video editing to deep learning, that's artificial intelligence, and self-driving cars, the need for advanced GPUs continues to grow. NVIDIA's core competency in this area positions them well to take advantage of this trend. NVIDIA's AI-focused initiatives are another significant factor in their investment potential. AI is transforming various industries and data centers at the heart of it all. NVIDIA's data center solutions are powering AI and deep learning applications across the globe. With the increasing demand for AI capabilities, NVIDIA's data center segment is poised for substantial growth. This is the chip, the money maker, the king, the H100. Not so long ago, it sold for $40,000 a pop. It was in very short supply. It is single-handedly driving NVIDIA's growth. The H100 is expected to sell 550,000 units this year. Just do the math, 40,000, 550,000 units. You can grab a calculator if you like. You can even count Tesla as a customer. $300 million? Easy peasy. Here is where AI is going in 2024 and beyond. You can see the H100 is branching into multiple different products. You've got the H200, the GH200, and so on, launching in the short term future. NVIDIA will target both training and inference. This is a key differentiator between NVIDIA and AMD. NVIDIA is conquering both training and inference. AMD is concentrating on inference at the moment. Not to mention that NVIDIA has 95% market share in AI. Just saying. On to gaming. NVIDIA's first chip, their first ever product, powered this. Great graphics, huh? Although it was a great game. <laughs> However, their chips now power this. The gaming industry is also a vital part of NVIDIA's business. With the booming popularity of esports and high-end gaming, NVIDIA's GPUs are at the forefront. The release of new GPUs with ray tracing capabilities and DLSS, that's Deep Learning Super Sampling, technology has given them a competitive edge. This trend is expected to continue as the gaming community keeps expanding. 
And let's fix it. NVIDIA also has another near monopoly in GPUs. 84% market share at last check. Moving on to autonomous vehicles, another exciting domain for NVIDIA. Self-driving cars are no longer just a futuristic concept. They're becoming a reality. NVIDIA's Orin platform provides the necessary hardware and software for autonomous driving and has plenty of customers. As this industry matures, it could be a significant source of revenue for the company. However, due to the early nature of this segment, I'm not including it in this DCF. There are reports of NVIDIA creating ARM CPUs in 2025. However, we know very little about this, so I'm also not counting this in this DCF. Time for the risks. First is the China ban. It won't affect numbers in the short term, but it will in the long term. The long-term implications are unknown at this point. Competition is also a factor to consider. Companies like AMD, Intel, and others are constantly pushing the envelope in the semiconductor space. It's important to track how NVIDIA positions itself against these competitors. NVIDIA is currently number one. Will they stay number one? That's really up to the NVIDIA's talent and Jensen, and Jensen Huang. And um, so no investment is without risks and challenges. Regulatory scrutiny, geopolitical issues like that China issue, and supply chain disruptions are all potential stumbling blocks. It's essential to factor these uncertainties into your investment thesis. Let me turn off the camera real quick so you can see the numbers. Wrong direction. <laughs> There we go. Okay, enough of the overview. Time for the financials. After financials will be my DCF valuation. NVIDIA's financial performance has been nothing short of incredible and record-breaking in the latest quarter, reflecting its successful growth strategy in, and market demand in AI. The company also invests heavily in research and development, ensuring that they remain at the forefront of technological advancements. As of the latest fin available financial data, NVIDIA reported the following. Revenue, let's see, most recent quarter, $13.5 billion. That's an incredible 101% increase over the previous year. Actually, even more incredible is the 88% increase over the previous quarter. That's huge. Gross margin, 70.1%, an increase of 26.6 basis points. This is entirely due to the H100. Operating income, up 487% year over year. Net income, up 422%. Cash flow, up 400%. You'll never see a quarter quite like this ever again. Now here's NVIDIA's last five years numbers. Revenue growth has been quite nice. This isn't the whole picture though. We need to dig deeper. Data center CAGR has been 51% average over the last five years. That is huge. That's, yeah, nothing, nothing bad to say about that one. Um, and that includes AI. Now this slide says everything you need to know about data center. AI just exploded last quarter as the H100s came onto the market, LLMs came on online, and demand exploded for NVIDIA's chips. So this segment is massive now. Gaming is growing at a nice 10% CAGR. To begin, let's understand the concept of a DCF valuation. DCF is a financial model that estimates the intrinsic value of a company by discounting its future cash flows to the present value. DCF is a critical tool for investors as it helps them make informed decisions on whether a stock is overvalued or undervalued. The present value of expected future cash flows is arrived at um, by using a projected discount rate. The WAG is commonly used to calculate that discount rate. These DCFs are commonly used by investors to pick stocks, among other uses. 
Lisa Su, AMD CEO, expects AI Kagger to grow from $30 billion today to $150 billion in 2027. That's just a four years away. That's a huge growth, and that's continuing a 50% Kagger for the next four years. That's big growth really fast. Given all the information we just discussed, this is actually my base case for data center projected revenue over the next 10 years. The growth starts at 65% next year and then declines gradually to 8% growth. I have gaming growing at 10% at first, then slowing down to 5% growth. Professional visualization likewise growing at 10% at first, then also slowing to 5% growth. I think those numbers are reasonable. The only real number of contention of that, in my opinion, is AI. Um, everybody will have a different opinion on how much AI will grow over the next 10 years. So you're free to adjust those numbers as you please. With that, um, the WAC indicates NVIDIA's discount rate at 11.67%. That's hot. And it's actually due to a combination of today's extremely high interest rates, as well as NVIDIA's volatility. That's the beta of 1.65. Um, if interest rates were more normal, NVIDIA would be discount. NVIDIA would have a discount rate more in the lines of 8% because they're an extremely stable company with a great balance sheet. So yeah, this is just one of those things where the discount rate is hurting every stock, um, NVIDIA included. Because, you know, the higher the discount rate or whack, the lower the valuation. So I think it's a little unfair due to NVIDIA stability as a company and the strength of their balance sheet. I'll just include charts for my base case. The other cases you can actually adjust yourself. I'll include the, um, actually I'm going to be including this model for free on my Patreon and the link will be in the description. So please check that out and it's completely free actually. Even though it's on Patreon, it is publicly available. You don't even need a Patreon account to download my investment thesis. Anybody, you can go incognito on Chrome and download the thesis. I tried it myself, it works. Okay, so yeah, with two quarters this year already wrapped up, there isn't too much guesswork for 2024. Um, oh yeah, 2024, NVIDIA's calendar year is actually um, the end of January, or sorry, the start of the year is, is on February 1st and then goes to the end of January. And then it's like one year ahead. So actually we are currently in NVIDIA's 2024 fiscal year. So that's why this starts at 2024 and there's two quarters left for NVIDIA in this um, fiscal year. Because they report earnings in one month actually for this last quarter. Um, so yeah, I estimate that 2024 will come in at 89% growth, which is actually in line with expectations from analysts. With growth dropping to 51% next year, gradually dropping to 7.72%. EBITDA margin remains high due to AI chip demand elevating prices. And they're only really being two competitors in this space. You now they're the one the other being AMD shortly. They're going to release the MI300 um, this quarter, actually, in a week or two. Taxes tick up to 10% um, over time. D and A and CapEx remain flat as a percentage of sales. Um, so just to be fair, I'm actually using a whack of 8% since the previous number it was just too high. Like, for example, if you were to do Apple, you know, I would give Apple a whack of 7 to 8% as well. Um, stable companies, I think, deserve a lower whack um, than, you know, more unstable companies. I'm also assuming a per perpetual growth rate of 3%. This gives us an implied stock price of $615. This is the perpetual valuation. And here's the multiple valuation. I put the multiple at 20 because of the extremely high margins that NVIDIA has. I mean, these are margins you don't see outside of software, really. Um, 
and even then, software has lots of R&D, so here we don't really ever see margins like this. Um, so it's down from the current multiple, mul sorry, it's down from the current multiple of over 80. This gives us an implied valuation of $667 for the multiple. I average the perpetual and the multiple valuations to come up with the implied share price, $640.90. The conservative case is $509, and the bull case is $791. While I can't quite get to an $1,100 justification, a 92% gain isn't too shabby, assuming the bull case plays out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Looking ahead, NVIDIA is not just resting on its laurels. They have a strategic vision that includes expanding into new markets and developing innovative technologies. They're moving into ARM CPUs as a testament to this. In conclusion, an NVIDIA investment thesis is a compelling topic to explore. Their strong position in GPUs, AI, gaming, data centers, and their forward-looking strategies make them an exciting investment option. However, like any investment, it comes with its fair share of risks. It's essential to conduct thorough research and consider your investment goals and risk tolerance. Thank you for joining us in this discussion. If you found this video informative, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting tech and investment content. Remember to do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. We'll see you in the next video.